I knew when I recorded that take of that solo that that was the one. And after doing some mixing, some EQ, adding some delay, I like it even better now. And I've got a process for getting melodic solos. I didn't even necessarily intend to have a process, but over these years of tracking, mixing, and streaming music, I've got a workflow that works for me. I didn't even really realize that it was a process for a long time, but looking back, it's the way I've done things for a while now. And nine times out of 10, I get a result I'm happy with. So we're going to talk about this process of getting melodic solos. I think you have to step out of your comfort zone a little bit. But when you're making good music, I was adding a lot of guitars to this. I added an acoustic guitar part. There's the biggest B pedal part that you didn't hear. It sounds like slide guitar at the beginning of the song. So I was going over and over this, the sounds that I had for this song all the time my wheels were turning as to what the guitar solo should sound like. And it's definitely uh, not always fast, but it works if you're patient with it. And there's no rules with mixing. You notice that I didn't have a vocal on there yet. I'm writing and recording the vocal right now. And usually the guitar solo for me comes after the vocal because everything should frame the vocal. But this time we're going to have to maybe make some arrangement choices or duck some things to get it to work with the vocal. Let's talk about this process I have for melodic solos. Very early on, I like to step a little outside of the pentatonic box. This gets me thinking melodically. And on this solo, it set up a motif that continued throughout the solo. Just putting some sharp sixes or ninths or flat fives in the solo can get you out of that boxed way of thinking. And I'm playing in the key of E. Really it's E flat because I'm a half step down, but we started with this lick. So right out of the gate, I started on a sharp six to the root to the two. And then we had a dominant seven, sharp six, and five slide back up to that six. And that got me thinking very linearly. Uh, it continued on to other licks. Like the more you slide up and down the neck or use single note patterns up and down the neck, the more melodic the solo is going to sound. For me, without a doubt, the biggest part of the process for getting a great lead guitar track for my music is getting great stereo rhythm guitars. And what I mean by this is I always start out with a really great guitar part, something I'm really digging on, and I feel like I can take it a lot of places and build a song out of it. And when I've got this part tracked in my DAW, I usually pan it to one side. Then on the opposite side, I don't double the part. I play something complementary usually something with a different rhythm, a different place on the neck, maybe completely even different chords that work. It's good to think about it rhythmically when you're doing this because it really fills out the balance of the stereo image. And if I'm playing one and three, one and three, if that's the driving part of the rhythm, then on the other side, a lot of times I'll be playing two and four, two, and four. That way you're filling in all those holes and it feels, you can really feel this. It's like a bouncing back and forth and it kind of gives you, it makes you rock and roll. You know what I mean? And it, it really, it's a great sound and it's all over music going way back. The stones were really great at it. And it's what I like to try and do with my music. And the part of the process that lends itself to lead guitar is you're playing everywhere on the neck, complementary parts. So you're learning the progression of the song completely. You know, you're learning it inside and out. And that way, when it comes time to play your lead, 
you're following the changes, getting those chord shapes, all that's already in there and it becomes like second nature to you and you know where you want to take the solo. I want to talk about some things to be mindful of with effects and post-processing, but before I do that, I need to say if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button and tell me about your workflow, how you like to record solos, the types of plugins and hardware you use, and tell me about how long you've been making music. I always enjoy hearing that stuff from you guys. Anything to do with music I'm interested in. And if you like this solo and want to check out some more of my music, my latest single, Pixel Palm Reader, is up now. Artist name is Thirsty Deer. All my music's available on all the streaming services. And this one will be out real soon. If you like learning about studio content, workflows, how to make things sound good in the studio, consider subscribing to the channel. I make a lot of this type of content. It's what I love to do almost as much as I love making the music. And we got videos coming out very regularly. I try and get at least one out a week and throw some shorts in there during the week as well. So I keep it busy around here and I think you'll enjoy it. So hit that subscribe button. A few things to think about with production on solos. It's fine to use spring reverb on the amp for your solos. Just don't go too heavy with it. But I wouldn't use a hall or a plate reverb pedal into the amplifier for your solos. Do that in post because if you track that way and it turns out not to be the flavor you're looking for, it's very hard to go back and change. Same with delays. I think for rhythm guitar, a lot of times a specific delay pedal is essential to the feel of the song. But for solos, it's not creating the feel of the song necessarily. And you can go back and use a pedal in post if there's a specific pedal that you can only get that sound from that pedal. You can do that in post with a pedal. But nine times out of 10, I'm usually going in with Echo Boy. That's what I did here. Echo Boy has every type of delay you can think of. Roland Space Echo, Echo Plex, which is what I used here. Vincent Echo Rec. Uh, master tape like studio master tape um different inches per second even you have 15 ips or 30 ips there's everything in there memory man and you can use midi with it to get your delays lined up to the bpm on the quarters ace you've got ping pong delays everything's in there so i wouldn't use a delay pedal for my solos most times because you are stuck with it if it turns out not to fit in the mix like you want. One thing I'm not currently doing, but I plan on starting to do very soon, is taking a DI before any pedals, just a clean DI with every guitar track. Still going into the amps, but just having that clean DI signal so I can reamp later. This is another route you could go if you do want to use a delay pedal into the amp. Just take a DI line out first. And then if you want to go back and change it, at least you have that DI. So these are just some things to think about with tracking solos and post-production.